We're talking about Microsoft Project today, and I'm going to get a schedule into this beast of a tool. If you've never used the tool before, this video is going to really help you. I'm going to make it nice and easy for you. It's one of the hottest days of the year. I've got a big light shining on me. I am compelled to do this quickly. As you know, I've recently created a project schedule in Microsoft Excel, which is absolutely fine for the project I'm working on. It's a nice and simple project, so I just needed a nice and simple schedule. But what if I had a boss who expected that schedule to be in Microsoft Project? What if the company I worked for expected everything to be in Project? What if the project schedule wasn't simple? What if there were hundreds or thousands of tasks and deliverables with lots of dependencies between them? I couldn't possibly do that in Excel. I'd have to use Project. Just in case you're in any of those situations or something similar, and you've never used Project before, and you don't know where to get started, this tutorial is gonna help you out. To be clear, this is very much a quick start how to use project tutorial. We are just scraping the very, very tip of the iceberg on this. This is an incredibly powerful tool and we're gonna be using a fraction of that capability. Anyway, enough chatter from me, let's get started. Let's start off by creating a blank project. Go to file, click save as, pick your location, and save the project. Go to the project tab and click on project information. Select the start date of the project. Make sure that schedule from says the project start date. Click OK. Next, we're going to customize the working time. In the project tab, click the change working time button. In this section, you can change the default calendar from having you working Monday to Friday from eight till five. For this particular project, I'm doing a seven day week. Yeah, you shouldn't really envy me. We click in work weeks and then click details. From here, you can see all of the days and you can change the settings for each day of the week. Choose the day that you want to change and then select set day to these specific working times. Now you can change the from and to times. Click OK when you're done. It's a good idea to include dates that you're not working on your project. So think ahead to things like national holidays, bank holidays, and any other time that you'll be off. Click on the exceptions tab and you can enter the details there. I know it seems like a lot of effort to do up front, but trust me, you only have to do it once and it'll stop you doing strange things like scheduling people to work on Christmas day. Let's just check on some of the default information around this project. We go to file, down to options and then select schedule. Double check here to make sure that the hours per day, the hours per week and the days per month are correct for your project. In my case, I'm working a few more days per month than most. You'll notice I've left new tasks created on manually scheduled rather than auto scheduled. That's just a personal preference. You may want to switch that. Click OK when you're done. That was the boring part. Now we're on to the interesting part. I'm entering the name of the first stage, initiation, into the task name column. Underneath it, I'm just listing the other tasks that are part of that stage. And I'm including a milestone to let us know when that stage is completed. Select the tasks that are part of the stage on the task tab and press the indent button once. Now you see that they've become nested within that stage. I'm gonna be a tiny bit lazy here. I'm just gonna copy and paste in the dates that I've got in my Excel document. But if you prefer, you can enter the dates and the durations yourself directly. I'm just stretching out the columns there so that we can see them a little bit more clearly. This is where project starts to really show its power. I've entered the number two there in the column predecessors on row number three. And what that's telling this is that row number three is dependent on row number two. And you see in the Gantt chart section over on the right hand side, there's now a little arrow connecting the two rows together. The relationship here is a finish to start. When the first task finishes, the second one starts. There are other variations of these relationships. You can have dependent tasks that are starting earlier than other tasks are finishing, 
or you can have them waiting for a while. We'll get into all of that in another video. So make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss it. You'll notice as we're amending the task dates that the stage dates are changing as well. To change a task to a milestone, go to duration and set it to zero days. Now you see over on the right, we have a little diamond that represents that milestone. I'm going to make that dependent on the business case being completed. And now it's moved across to the right and it's got an arrow connecting it. Now I'm going to show you a slightly different way to nest those tasks. You'll see that I've created two tasks here, which sit in the planning stage, but I haven't put a row for the planning stage. All I have to do is select the tasks that I want to include in the stage. And on the task tab, go across to the summary button. You see it's inserted a new summary task. And all we have to do is select inside that cell and change the name. Okay, I'm jumping ahead a little bit now and I'm including the execution stage. I've already copied this across from my Excel document. The reason I left this on manually schedule is because I knew I was going to be copying and pasting dates across from Excel. I promise we'll look at all of that in a future video, but if you already have dates in mind for exactly when things are going to happen, keep it to manually schedule. Okay, I'm just completing the predecessors here. So I'm linking up all of the tasks that are part of the execution stage. You notice in some cases that I'm saying that tasks are dependent on more than one predecessor. That's absolutely fine. You'll notice that the task has two arrows pointing towards it. The task will commence after the last day of activity from its predecessor tasks. If you right click on any of the tasks and select information, you can then select predecessors from the task information and it will show you the details around all of the predecessors that are connected to that task. I'm just going to include a milestone to say when execution is completed. Now I've included the closure stage and I'm just going to add the predecessors. You'll notice we have a column called resource names. In the case of this project, there's only one person working on it. So this is going to be nice and simple for me. You'll see my name appearing next to the tasks over on the right hand side as I add them. You'll see the project allows you to drag and copy. Have you noticed the little red people that have appeared over on the left hand side there? That's another advantage the project has over Excel. This is showing where a resource is overbooked. One of the things you'll want to do with this is to show your progress. To do this, we go as far across to the right of the columns as we can until we find add new column. From there, we click on it and select percent complete. I've completed a number of the tasks on this plan, so I'm marking them all off as 100%. You'll see ticks are appearing over on the left-hand side of the page to indicate that the task is complete. And you'll also notice over on the right-hand side in the Gantt chart that there is a darker line going through the task line to indicate the level of completeness. By the way, if you're curious, you might have noticed when I selected the column that there are a lot of other options on there. There are so many things you can choose from here. Finally, one useful point here for when you're presenting this to different audiences, you can right click on the column to hide it, but that doesn't delete the content. If you go back to the add new column and you select the hidden column from that list, it will appear and it will retain the data that was already in it. I hope that was helpful to you, but if you're finding yourself now thinking, oh, I just wish I could just do this in Excel, check out this video here because this will show you how to do it in a matter of minutes.